Sadly, domestic violence is a very common issue which affects both men and women alike. It's been on the increase lately and it affects a great many people every year as well as their families and their children. But what criminal offences might somebody be committing if someone has been the victim of domestic violence? The first potential offence is assault and battery. The most common and the most basic criminal charges which might have been committed in the case of a domestic setting are assault and battery. This is where the wording can get quite confusing. Common assault and battery are offences mostly embodied in the common law and the definitions are well known. They're made offences also under section 39 of the Criminal Justice Act 1988. Assault, sometimes called a common assault, doesn't necessarily mean what it does in normal language. In law, an assault is committed where a person intentionally or recklessly causes another person to apprehend immediate unlawful violence. What that means is no touching is required for there to be an assault. Your actions or your words have to be threatening enough to cause another person to fear they'll be attacked imminently. Doesn't matter if that's intentional or whether you ought to have known that fear might be caused. And even a particularly menacing phone call could amount to an assault, a case called Ireland. Although these days there are other offences which would better cover this sort of behaviour. Battery or assault by beating is probably the most common and the most basic form of violent criminal offence. Despite the name, it doesn't actually mean you have to actually batter or beat someone. It just means that unlike common assault, contact is involved. Even the lightest touch could amount to battery. There's no requirement for any injury and no requirement for any marks of any kind. A person can be the victim of an assault by beating if they've been pushed, slapped, punched, kicked, grabbed or hit with or without a weapon. Both basic forms of assault are punishable by a maximum sentence of six months in prison and they can only be tried by the magistrate's court. If a person is assaulted by a partner or a family member and they receive serious injuries, the attacker might be charged with assault occasioning actual bodily harm or grievous bodily harm. The assault part works exactly the same way as we've just discussed. The difference is in the level of injury required. ABH, actual bodily harm, is found in section 47 of the Offences Against the Person Act 1861. It requires any injury which is calculated to interfere with the health or comfort of the victim. That's a case called Miller. Usually the Crown Prosecution Service doesn't charge this unless there's some relatively serious injury but short of GBH. It carries a maximum prison sentence of up to five years. Inflicting grievous bodily harm, which is section 20, of the Offences Against the Person Act 1861 covers any case where a person has been caused really serious harm, a case called Smith. That includes cuts, wounds, broken bones and other very nasty injuries. It can carry a prison sentence of up to five years or for GBH with intent, life imprisonment. Coercive and controlling behaviour is a very complicated and broad offence and I'm not going to go into all the details of it here, I'm, I'm keeping it relatively simple. In some of the worst and most prolonged domestic abuse cases, a person could be charged with the new offence of coercive or controlling behaviour. It's in section 76 of the Serious Crime Act 2015. The offence addresses behaviour which has a serious effect on the victim in a domestic setting. Physical domestic violence can be an element of a pattern of coercive or controlling behaviour. A pattern can mean where a person has been violent towards a partner or family member on at least two occasions. Often these cases will involve a long pattern of psychological or perhaps physical abuse which can span weeks or months or even many years. A person who's convicted of this can face up to five years in prison. Allegations of domestic violence are taken very seriously by the police and they're often quick to intervene if they receive a 999 call suggesting that it could be happening in real time. Once the police attend, they may arrest the alleged perpetrator, they may take them to the police station for charge and interview. Many people don't realise that unlike in American films and TV, there's no concept of pressing charges in the UK. The only people responsible for choosing whether somebody is charged with a criminal offence and taken to court as a result of their conduct are the police 
and eventually the Crown Prosecution Service, who make the final call. The views of a complainant or an alleged victim are considered, but they're not binding. Often the Prosecution Service will still go ahead with the prosecution against somebody without the support of the victim. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it helpful, I do have a whole series of explainer videos on criminal law and family law. Uh, you can subscribe to this YouTube channel, which gives you regular updates on uh, all sorts of legal explainer topics. And this is my favorite video, which you might want to think about watching next. Thank you for watching. I'm Barrister Daniel Barnett. Bye bye.